So they say that with age comes wisdom. And I just turned 30 roar, I mean 34. Just kidding, but actually I did turn 34. And with all the wisdom that I've been able to accumulate over the last 15, almost 16 years as I've been an entrepreneur, I wanted to share that with you. You're probably watching this video because you're a graphic designer and you want to help increase your sales skills, get better at what you do, sell more money, make more money, and stop living as a starving artist. Well, that's what this video is going to do. And let's just jump right into it. So this video is about influence versus persuasion. And a lot of you graphic designers are trying to persuade your customers or your clients to buy from you when you should be influencing them to buy from you. So if you're looking on, you want to be able to bring more influence, more credibility to the table and stop trying to persuade people to buy from you versus your competitors and to do business with you, then you need to learn what the difference is between persuading versus influencing. And so today I got five tips that I'm going to give you guys to help you start influencing your clients versus persuading them. So let's jump into it. So the first one, and this is a really, really big one is pulling the rope versus pushing the rope. Many of you guys are trying to push the rope. You're trying to push your services on people. You're trying to get them to, to believe in you, to buy your services, to do business with you instead of pulling them towards you. And people are coming to you because they have a specific problem. If you're just trying to sell your services, you're going to be in a commodity just like everybody else. You're going to be selling time or you're going to be selling a project. When I sell my clients, I do not sell either one of those things. I sell the value and the problem that I'm solving. Whatever that problem that I'm solving is worth something to them. That's why they are looking for somebody like me to come solve it. So you need to be thinking about that. You need to be pulling the rope towards you versus pushing the rope and pushing the rope in a lot of ways is pushing your services, pushing your, your features, pushing all the things that we're going to talk about today versus pulling them towards you and bringing them closer and closer to building that relationship. When I'm selling, I'm focused on completely building the relationship. And if there's an opportunity for me to solve the problem and I can do that, then I will. But my relationships with anybody that calls me is never to try to sell anybody anything. I want to make sure that they have a problem and they actually fit the type of client that I want to begin with. So that's the first one is I want you to start pulling the rope and not pushing the rope. You'll have a lot more success and you'll get a lot more of a closing ratio, a lot higher closing ratio. And in turn, you'll make a lot more money. So the second step, to becoming a better salesperson when it comes to selling your graphic design is teaching versus telling. I always tell my clients one of the first few things I say to them on the phone is, look, I want to give you a foundation to stand on and make sure that you have realistic expectations. Whether you're dealing with me, you're getting a quote from me or you're dealing with anybody else in the future. I want you to have the most amount of information possible. That's really valuable to you so you can make an educated decision. Does that sound right? Does that sound fair to you? And 99 out of hundred times, probably even more than that, over 999 out of a thousand times people are like, yes, I would love that. And so what I do is I teach them the right expectations to have. What kind of graphics do they need? Where are they going to be using it? What formats should they have? What type of turnaround should be looking at? I really focus on teaching them the proper ways and the non-proper ways to actually buy and do business with a graphic designer. Trying to negotiate on the price or trying to negotiate on an hourly rate is all it's doing is creating that starving artist mentality and really not leaving any meat on the bone for them or for you. The more money that you get from your client, the more you're going to be able to do for them and the more value you're going to be able to bring. Money is a tool. It's just energy. And if you're afraid to ask for money, that is going to be a big hurdle that you're going to need to get over before you can really become a great salesperson. It's something that I've struggled with over the years of asking for money or wanting to charge higher prices, people only remember the most expensive person and the cheapest person. So you got to decide whether you want to be high quantity or high quality. It's totally up to you. So I want you to start teaching versus telling them, oh, this is what I do and this is who I am. And this is why you should do business with me. People don't want to be told anything. They want you to teach them. So when I teach people, I start to build that rapport, start to build that trust and they realize that I'm in it to actually genuinely serve and help them, which leads me to point number three. I want you to serve them not sell them. Now, don't get me wrong. I want you to be genuine and not step out of integrity. You are selling. Whenever you're building a relationship with somebody and you're trying to basically nurture that relationship and grow that relationship, it is sales. What I'm teaching you is sales, but I want you to come from the approach where you're there to serve them. They have a problem, right? And the bigger the problem that you have that you can solve, the more that you should be paid for that. If they have a problem, that's a million dollar problem. 
Well, should you get 10% of that for solving that problem or 20% of that for solving that problem versus getting $100 for a flyer design or $1,000 for a landing page? Solving the problem is worth a lot more than just providing a service. So I want you guys to serve these people and genuinely meet them where they're at. Maybe their problem is just mindset, that it's more mindset than it is a technical uh, lack of ability or uh, some sort of limitation on the execution of their marketing or their graphic design. Maybe it's just more of a mindset that they just have the wrong mindset and that that's the problem that you're solving. It's different for every single person, but I want to make sure that you really understand you need to be leading, leading with the napkin and not the bib. There are too many people out there that are hungry, that are desperate. They can People can sense that desperation. So I don't want you to be desperate. I want to make sure that you're actually out there to serve people, to help them solve their problems first, and then you can get what you need. You shouldn't get shortchanged. You shouldn't get screwed over at the end of it, but you need to make sure that you're serving them at your highest level possible. The fourth tip is value versus features or even benefits. Benefits are important, but features are an absolute waste. When you start talking about features, you start putting yourself in the same bucket as every single competitor. Oh, I'm gonna give you three logo concepts and I'm gonna give you this and I'm gonna give you that. That stuff happens after the sale or at the very end of the sale when you're actually doing the proposal phase. But in the initial discovery, your whole focus is, is bringing them value. How can I eliminate the challenges? Just a quick story. I had a client that came to me that was getting thousands of phone calls during the holiday season and she had a meat company. She sold meat and she said, everybody calls me and asks me, how much meat should I buy? How much meat should I buy? It was driving her crazy. 7,000 calls just for Thanksgiving alone. And I thought to myself, how can I help her solve this problem? How can I bring her value in this? So what do we do? We came up with the first ever meat calculator where you can calculate the type of meat you're gonna have, if there's bone in it or not. And we created that solution for her and ended up cutting her calls down by more than 70%. That is value. That extra time that she has now, she can spend more with customers. She can spend more just not having to be answering questions over the phone constantly. So being able to understand the value that you're bringing and selling value and what each of the things that you're doing, what that value is worth is really important. So if you're doing three logo concepts, okay, why three logo concepts and not five? or why 10 logo concepts and not three, right? Being able to sell that value and what makes you different in each one of those line items versus just selling the line item is gonna give you a lot higher of a price point. So I just wanna make sure that you understand that. Sell value, don't sell features and benefits. And the fifth tip, and this is a huge one for you, and I hopefully you're taking notes because I want you to be able to really digest this and take this in and understand this and apply this to your business because information without application will not get you a transformation. And so the fifth one here is wanting versus needing. And this is a valuable lesson that I learned from one of my mentors, Dighton Bradford, years and years ago. And he said, I want your business, but I don't need your business. When you come from the standpoint that I need your business, oh, please, 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 and you have that desperation, people can feel that, I talked about that. But you need to be coming from a place where, hey, I want your business, I wanna earn your business, I wanna show you what we can do, I wanna show you how good we are, I wanna show you our talent, I wanna show you the level that we're gonna serve you at, but I don't need your business. Your 100 bucks or your 500 bucks or your 1,000 bucks isn't gonna change my life, but I'm here to serve you, I'm here to solve your problems because I know long-term we can do a lot of business together and that for me is what's most important is I wanna have a long-term relationship. That's what I want from this. I don't need your business, but I want it. So make sure you're not coming from a desperate place where, oh, I just need to pay my bills. Oh, I just need to, I need to get your business. Oh, I just need to get this order to be able to do this. When you come like that, you're gonna be actually lowering your standard and having to meet them where they're at. So when they start throwing you price objections, the chances of you dropping your price to meet them just to get the job, just to sell the deal is gonna be there and you're gonna be rushing through it just to get to the end of the deal, just to get the yes. When you want their business, you're not rushing to the end of the deal to get the yes. You're asking better questions. You're taking the time to really understand the problem. You're not looking at the dollar signs at the end of it. So that's the big shift and the big change that I wanted to get through to you guys today is wanting versus needing. Those are the five tips. If these were valuable for you, please share this video with a fellow graphic designer. I wanna help more graphic designers like you and I, web designers, motion designers, get breakthrough in their career. And sales is a big area of struggle for them. A lot of, lot of graphic designers are introverts and they don't have that natural sales ability and I happen to have that. So that's why I'm sharing this with you guys today and I wanna get you guys breakthrough. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you follow the Instagraphics Pro Network and join our community. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Thank you guys so much. I'm Adrian Boysell and as always, keep looking up.